Welcome to our fifth episode of Sharkcast, our student-led podcast here at Sandersville Elementary. I'm Addison. I'm Alexis. I'm Alpha. And I'm Parker. And Austin, as always, is helping us, us with running all of our awesome gear purchased by our PTA. Are you a member of PTA? Look at our podcast description for information. This week's episode, we'll be hearing from fourth graders and a few sweet kindergartners about being thankful. And we have a new segment on our sports with Parker and Ben. Please make sure to like and subscribe to our podcast. You can also share with a friend. Our guest today is Miss Groskog. Miss Roscoe, welcome to Sharkcast, and thank you for coming to hang out with us. So, Miss Roscoe, what's been going on lately? Oh, you know, not a whole lot. I've been doing a lot of COGAT and Iowa testing, which is the third grade testing that we do in Fayette County for the Gifted and Talented program. So that's really been keeping me busy. So I've been kind of holed up and doing that for a while, but I'm ready to get back in the swing of things, hopefully next week. Just in time for break. (laughs) (laughs) And as you might know, Alpha said that Miss Roscoe has some really cool, awesome (laughs) shoes. So first, just how many shoes do you have? Oof, enough. I guess I could say, well, my Mr. Roscoe would say I have enough. (laughs) I would say there is no such thing as too many pairs of shoes. I would agree with that. (laughs) I just, I love buying shoes. I love shoes so much. The comfier and flashier, the better, in my opinion. I I agree. It's either comfy and flashy or comfy and black. I really like black shoes. There you go. They're sharp. And I go with anything. I got a question. You have a question. Where do you buy your shoes? Because I really wanted to go to that place and get shoes. I am all about the sales. So I'm all about sales. So I'll look on social media and those kinds of things. And I get the Nike emails. So then whenever they have sales going on, I usually pop on that. Um, I, I pride myself on being a good discount shopper. I bet you have a pair of Jordans, too. I don't. That could be my next purchase. Do it. I want to see you come to school with a pair of Jordans. Okay. Every day you come to school and it's like you have a new pair of shoes. They just look fantabulous. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Also, I have one more question. Yes. But shoes. Um, do you um, do you like like uh like like wear a different pair of shoes every day of the week, or do you just stick with one pair of shoes all week? With it's like. Mm, that's a good question. I really try to. Well, I try to somewhat match my outfits, but I also take into consideration what I'm going to be doing during the day. So if I'm going to be walking from one end of the building all the way to the other, I try to wear tennis shoes. Um, mm. And if I'm going to be walking around doing testing, I try to make sure my shoes don't go clunk, clunk, clunk on the floor. So <sighs> that's kind of, I take that in consideration, how much walking I'll be doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of our school, what do you do here at school? I'm glad you asked. I am the gifted and talented resource teacher. So what that means is I work with all students, kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade, and I work with their teachers, and I help with all students' strengths. And that's academic areas, but that's also arts areas and leadership and creativity. So I work with teachers to strengthen um, and enrich students' skills in any areas that they might have some talents in. Mm. Do you like doing that? I do. I do like it. It's been a neat transition. I was a fourth grade teacher here at Sandersville before I um, went and got my master's degree as a gifted educator. So I like the transition from going to just one grade level to getting to work with all sorts. So I go from first grade to fifth grade throughout the day. So it just always keeps me on my toes. I feel like I get to know the whole school. Um, So I like to tell kids, I think I have the best job in the school because I get to work with all kids, but also in all subjects, not just math and reading, but I get to do things like dance and drama and music and and things like that. That's really cool. Because there's more to you, there's more to kids than just school and academics. There's all sorts of things you can be good at so. yeah also um whose fourth grade class did you teach and and like right now so like you could have been teaching miss deep's class or mm-hmm. whoever's could, so like really? whose class did you teach before oh um i was in mrs deep's class i was actually actually you know what it's kind of funny i think i've been in nine classrooms in this school um, I've been in, I taught in Mrs. Deep's classroom, and then I've also taught in what is now Miss Crocker's classroom when I was a fourth grade teacher, both of those. I don't know that, like, when I left to do Gifted and Talented, I'm not sh- I don't remember 
who it, than it was that then took my position. I think that teacher may not be here anymore. Mm. That's a good question, though. It's kind of been a lot of, I have to kind of puzzle piece all the years together. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to sing? I do enjoy singing, but I don't consider myself to be very talented at it. I mean, I can sing a song. I like to belt out some Disney music. I like to, oh. I like country music. I like, we listen to the kids bop radio in the car. And I mean, I'll belt it out. Um, but my kids tell me that they'd rather hear the real singers. Do you, um, do you, do you listen to Christmas music already? I do have a, like, I have my pre-programmed channels in my van, and there is one that is a Christmas channel. So I've been known every so often if it comes across and I'm scanning. Is, is it 94.5? No, it's one of the XM channels. Um, mm. I think there's, like, a Hallmark Christmas channel. There's Country Christmas. There's um, there's all sorts of other ones, too. Okay. It's sorry to change the, like, awesome little music thing that's Let's going on right now. Let's do it. Um, can you tell us about your family? Sure. So I have three kids. Um, Miss Roscoe and I have an eight-year-old son named Blair. He's a third grader here at Sandersville. I have a four-year-old son named Rhodes, and he'll be in kindergarten here next year. <gasps> and then I have a two, almost three-year-old daughter named Bonnie Ellison, and she is a little firecracker, and she <laughs> will be in kindergarten in, I think, three years. Okay. So... Yes, yeah, so we live here in Lexington, and we have a dog named Paisley. She's a boxer, and we have a cat a named Edward. Ooh, Edward. Yeah, uh, I love is that it, name. Wait, it, sorry, I didn't mean to be um, So, uh, is it hard taking care of all the children and the animals? It's <laughs> a good question. It's a lot to keep up with. I will say sometimes I feel like my animals might be messier than my um, kids at times. Um, my my dog Paisley, she was our first child. She's almost twelve, so she's she's um, been around the longest. Um, but she's our oldest child, I guess we could say. But yeah, it's mm. a lot to keep up with. So that's why when you think Miss Roscoe walks down the hallway really fast or just seems like she's uh, got <laughs> something on her mind, I probably do. <laughs> um, you know what I was thinking? What? Because somebody, I'm not sure who, I think it might have been you, mentioned Edward. Mm -hmm. Um, Really quick uh, Twilight question. <gasps> okay. Jacob or Edward. And me personally, oh I'm gosh. team Jacob just because mm. I like um, I like wolves in real life. Well, I base it on the books, not team the movies. Edward. And I'm team Edward all the way. Yes. I'm High five. I love Edward. Yes. Are you a dog person or a cat person? I really do like both, since we have both. But if I only could have one, I would choose a dog. Mm. I can yes. agree with that. I'm sorry. But cats, cats scare me. Cats are easier me. to take care of. But uh, dogs are. I, I have a soft spot for dogs. Cats scare me a little. <laughs> I can yeah. agree with that. that my Ed, well, Edward is named Eddie, really, but we he's in trouble so much we call him Edward. So. <laughs> they okay. scratch you on your face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my okay. cat does that. Wait. So have you ever heard of the dog type, or like rat terrier? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, do you know what they look like? Yes. My grandpa and grandma used to have one years ago, way, way before I was born. That's kind of cool because my dog is a rat terrier mixed with a chihuahua. He, oh. looks like a, he looks like a little black rat terrier with like little white on him. Chihuahua? Like 20 pounds? Um, mm. Yeah, mm -mm. probably about that. I remember, okay, I'm just going to say this because I think it's kind of funny. So, um, one time, I was hanging out with a friend's uh, Cora and Iris, mm -hmm. not the Cora who goes to the school, but some others, and my friend Iris wanted to pick up Bowie, so I picked them up, and he ended up hitting her in the face with his paw, but luckily it wasn't that oh hard. Oh, my gosh. It wasn't that hard, but it was kind of funny because we all kind of laughed because he was just like, boink. And, just oh. and it is, and it's understandable why some people, because I've got some friends who are nervous around animals, and so I have to be careful. And Because Paisley's a lot. Paisley's a boxer, and so she's, if you know anything about boxer dogs, they're very, um, very Hyper. playful, very rambunctious. So. Yeah. If, you, yeah, they are. Yes. if you don't know what boxer dogs do, essentially, let me, let me sum it up real quick. So boxer dogs like to go into rings and box people, and <laughs> <laughs> that is why they are called boxers. I actually, Big I did brain knowledge. read, because I, I researched, because when I was first got married and, and got Paisley, I researched and was explaining and justifying why I needed this boxer. 
And um, they do get their name supposedly from because when they play, they play with their paws and they kind of look like they're boxing. So apparently yeah. that's part bing, of the bing. reason why they got their name. I, yeah. I have um, two Aussie doodles and they look like they're boxing all the time. Yeah, dogs <laughs> like to play. Yeah. Aussie, um, Aussie, Aussie. To get back in the school mood, okay. what kind of student were you in school? Ooh. <laughs> I was a rule follower, we should say. I <laughs> am a person who enjoys rules. Um, I like to know what to do. I know what my expectations are. I would say I was a pretty good student. Um, I had to learn sometimes the hard way between um, what it was to be um, bossy versus what it meant to be a good leader. Um, mm. So I had some good teachers along the way who kind of helped me with that. Because then I think that's always a good lesson. There's always that transition between third, fourth, fifth grade. And then I went to a school that was kindergarten all the way up to sixth grade. So oh. sixth grade, you know, you're much older than the younger students. And so, you know, it's just the learning how to interact and how to deal with all sorts of ages all in one school. And then our junior high was only seventh and eighth grade. And so that was a short little time. And then high school. So I feel like I probably changed throughout I was probably more a little bit more outgoing in elementary school in the smaller smaller setting and then I was probably a little bit more quiet but I was always a pretty good student mm. I liked to get my homework done I never wanted to get in trouble um and things like that so I kind of laugh because it I've, I feel like I've been able to pass on some of the lessons to my students that I learned as a student too <laughs> yeah are you sure about that oh, oh what are yeah. you saying you don't seem like a quiet kid to me. <laughs> no, no, you do not I, I'm learning to, you know what it's, I've learned over the years and what I would go back to myself, especially in my high school self, I'd go back and I would say, don't worry about what other people think of you. You have fun. You enjoy yourself. You enjoy being around the people that you're around and just have fun with it and be yourself. So uh -huh. mm. also the sixth graders ever help with the kindergartners. I remember doing something where we would go, because I remember very much as like vividly as a kindergartner, some of the sixth graders coming down and me thinking that they were looked so tall and so old. And um, and then I remember thinking as a sixth grader that I didn't feel that big, you know. But, um, yeah, there would be some different things um, that we would do. Like we'd go read to the kindergartners and things like that. Mm. Well, I would love to do that because it was so neat. much fun. When yeah. I was younger okay. in, like, uh, I don't know, grade, I think it was first, but mm -hmm. we could have been in COVID still, so I have no idea. Um, <laughs> the years but all just run together, don't exactly. they? Exactly. But when I was younger, I remember, like, these really big people, mm -hmm. and they would just come to our class and read with us, and they were always so happy and hyped up to see <laughs> us, and they would, like, play games with us, read books with us. I remember once who, um, one of them <laughs> did a backflip for in class? Us. Yes, like on two desks, and it was just something that I'll never forget. I would love to like impress some kindergartners. <laughs> That's like I bet you could. I bet kindergartners would be very impressed with you guys. I, w yeah. I was the big kid once, so my dad had to, t had to do this thing for his job. Mm -hmm. He went to this other school and taught a bunch of like third graders mm -hmm. on this one thing. I, I, when my dad left the room, I was like, make sure you listen. Uh, <laughs> make sure. He wanted them to be good for your dad. Yes. I get that. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. And um, did you have any other jobs um, than teaching and, like, before teaching? Yeah. My very first job, well, probably babysitting was probably my first, first job. But my first um, kind of employment was I worked at a family-owned farm market, um, where I grew up and it was really fun I worked with my cousin and some of my best friends and um, and it was just neat it was a great family to work for I learned I finally at the age of 16 learned the difference between a zucchini and a cucumber <laughs> what's the difference um, I well, still don't know they taste a little different but they definitely look a little different zucchini's almost kind of got like a slight stem to it oh yeah. okay um where did you grow up oh sorry alpha were you gonna say that uh, no, I was going to say something different. <laughs> he was probably impressed by my knowledge of zucchinis. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this, my, my job at um, the farm market was Engelbrecht's Farm Market. I grew up in Newburgh, Indiana. And so that's where mm. I grew up. And so that's, I had that job for a while. I've, I've done a little, a little bit of everything. I was a server at a restaurant. I 
um, worked at clothing stores. I've worked at Old Navy and American Eagle and, and things like that. So I kind Ooh. of tut I tutored students. Um, so I've kind of done a little bit of everything, which I think is important. I think it's very important that you do many different types of jobs. That sounds more like you. What's yeah, your which, which social. Seems more like me. Social. Oh, well, I like that. I take that as a compliment. But you know what? It would be, I kind of consider myself a little bit of an introvert. I like, I like my alone time. I like mm -hmm. my quiet time. So mm -hmm. you're like an omnivert, and if you don't know what <laughs> that is, it's <laughs> where you're, I bet I could guess what you think that is. Yeah, I, I do. I kind of consider myself a little bit of both. Um, mm -hmm. Really quickly, because Thanksgiving's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I love sitting around the din dinner table um, with my family. Mm -hmm. So I'd just like to ask really quick, what's your f favorite Thanksgiving dessert? Mm. I like cranberry. Cranberry for des dessert? Just cranberry? Uh, I've, no, I've had cranberry. Um, like, okay, so cranberry so I, went, I put on my turkey. That's like my appetizer. Well, rolls are the appetizer. Then you mm -hmm. put a little cranberry on the turkey. You put a little stuffing there, too. Make a little sandwich with your roll. And then you have some green beans. You've got your broccoli casserole. I mean, you have to sample everything. That's the rule. Make sure, yeah, but, make sure oh. you have yourself some cranberry juice cranberry on New juice. Year's. I, I meant like, okay, so I went to a thing mm -hmm. where I had um, cranberry, and I don't think I've had cranberry. I think it was jelly before, mm -hmm. and it was really good, and so I'd love to have that again. But also, I also like apple pie. Ooh. It's one of my favorite pies. Ooh. Apple, Ooh, that pumpkin. Hits. My aunt cheesecake. is a really good, um, my aunt, my cousins, they're really good at making desserts. And so I always look forward to seeing what they come up with. <laughs> guys, guys, we got we got to remember what we got to do. Okay, we do this every podcast. Okay, you're no, nervous no, now. No, every no, just no, one day. One day. I'm trying to predict day. what it is going to happen. My who's, ruin the mood. Who's your favorite NFL team and why? I knew that he was coming. <laughs> I have to say I did not really, I don't really follow the NFL. We watch it and it's on in my house. I mean, I would say the only team that I would, the team that comes to mind are the Denver Broncos because that was my brother's. Growing up, that was I have a younger brother. He's two years younger than me. That was my brother's favorite football team. I mean, he had to go watch the games in a separate area of the house. He was very intense. You know, the, we've gone to games. And um, so I, I go to them just because it's kind of what I've been used to. But I just kind of like watching all teams. I grew up – or I didn't grow up. But I lived in Rhode Island for a little bit after I got married to Mr. Roscoe. And we went to, you know, the Patriots uh, – very mm. big team up there. So that was very contagious. It was very neat to kind of be around that. But I love football. I love the the fun. I love the fan base. But I'm not – I don't – I can't say in good standing that I'm one or the other because I just kind of watch them all. I can res I can respect that. Yeah. I, I, can, I can do all that. Yeah, because definitely. I can't say that I'm, you know, I'm the, a huge fan of the Denver Broncos because I couldn't tell you who's on the team anymore. Now, yeah. back in high school, I could have told you who's on the team because my brother would talk about it at dinner every night. But. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of football, uh, for my birthday a week ago, mm -hmm. I actually went in the suite Ooh. for uh, the Kentucky game. It was oh, that's freezing outside. I was going to say, it's, well, it's better to be in a suite then. Yes, definitely, because it was freezing. They actually lost to Vanderbilt, though. I know. Vanderbilt, but did you get free though. food? Yes. There you go. Mm-hmm. That was my favorite part. Good. And especially because it was, like, my birthday. That was there big. It's fun to, spe to feel special on your birthday. Y you yeah. never did. Uh, sorry. We're going to rewind real quick. <laughs> um, we don't have a sound effect for that. I want to make it myself. <laughs> but, um, so, you never did say what your favorite Thanksgiving dessert oh, was. Oh, Thanksgiving. Going back to Thanksgiving dessert. Ooh. Any pie, I would say. I really like pecan pie and I really like pumpkin pie, but... I can't do nuts. Me neither. Um, I apologize. Very, I'm very lucky I don't have allergies to that. I don't have allergies. I just... Oh, oh think me I'm neither. Disgusting. Pardon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. High five. <laughs> Pardon. But if you're going to have pie, you have to have just as much Cool Whip to go on top as there yes. is. I, I say yes. Ice, I, I say agree. ice cream. I say ice cream instead of Cool Whip. Oh, I can see that, too. I like, 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 just like gotta apple have, pie with, like, yeah. with, with Ooh, apple pie. Oh, yeah. Ice apple. cream on apple pie, for sure. Yeah, vanilla. I That's do both. Really I agree, Alexis. I, ice cream on cherry pie. Hmm, that'd be good. So we usually don't have apple. At my house, we usually don't have apple or cherry for Thanksgiving. When I think Thanksgiving, but everybody's is different. I think of pumpkin and pecan. So yes. to me, Cool Whip is a good. Me too. I think of Oreo because um, my aunt always cooks 
Oreo pie, and oh my gosh, when you tell you that's good, it's from scratch. You know it's going to be now, good when it's I from scratch. I sometimes make a bread pudding for my family, Ooh. and it's my uncle's favorite. So um, maybe I'll, maybe you've inspired me to, to make that this year. Wait, what's, yeah. what's your... I'm sorry, Alexis. No, 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 it's okay. You go ahead. Um, I just wanted to ask, mm-hmm. what was your favorite um, thing, like, subject um, when you were in our grade? Like in fifth grade, because me personally, it's social studies just because of the music. But I think it's always been reading for me because I I really like reading. That's my least favorite. Really? Yes. Why? Yeah, I, I like just, I, I was I could I could read a I just always had my nose in a book. Reading. I, oh, same. I like to read. Yeah. I oh, don't, speaking of, what's your favorite book? Ooh, good question. Now, book of all time is kind of just a special one to me because it's gone with the wind because that was a very like that was a kind of a hobby my um, grandma and I had together it was I kind of collected you know different memor- memorabilia from the Wizard of Oz and then gone with the wind and so I'd say that but one of my most favorite books that I haven't read in a while but I used to read with my class was the Mysterious Benedict Society and it's <gasps> got it has a couple um, follow-ups with that so those have kind of been the two that really come to mind um, but I'm kind of one of those. It's kind of like same thing with like movies or you know or foods or anything else. It's hard to pick just one. Yeah, but I always go Disney, back to my classic. Do you mm-hmm. always have? Do you have Disney Plus? Yes. Uh, you, have you seen Benedict? I have not. Oh, the but first I have se- heard it's really good. The first season, me and my sisters watched it. Was really good. The second season, we haven't watched yet. Mm-hmm. But if it's anything like the first season, mm-hmm. it's gonna be really mm-hmm. good. Wait. Okay. So I have. Three things to say, and it's not going to be, like, that much. But okay. first of all, is it weird that I don't really have anything cranberry whenever I eat <laughs> Thanksgiving? Um, is that no. weird? Okay, not at yeah. all. I didn't think nope. it was going to be weird. And second thing is, since Thanksgiving is coming up, but a lot of my friends say that they're celebrating Christmas right now. Which one do you uh. think we should celebrate? I mean, and until all, it's a, the day after Thanksgiving is where you can start celebrating for Christmas. Yeah. But until then, actually, mm-hmm. unless you're a store shop, because the it's apparently 12 a.m. on the dot is where you start um, celebrating for Christmas. But yeah. it's Halloween, 12 a.m., because Thanksgiving doesn't matter to them, apparently. See, I already put my Christmas tree up. I just had to because I cleaned my whole entire room and I was like, I can't do this because I know it's going to get really messy. So I'm just going to put all my Christmas stuff up already. Mm-hmm. We've started we because it kind of takes a while. But no, I, yeah. I'm going kind of going back to your question. I think people could celebrate any holiday whenever they wanted to, really. Because yeah. we never yeah. always, you know, we celebrate Christmas with my immediate family, my kids and my mm-hmm. husband on, you know, Christmas Day because we celebrate Christmas in our house. But my brother who lives far away and his wife, we don't necessarily get to see them right on the holiday. So we kind of make up our own day for our Christmas. So I think it's kind of, I think it just kind of everybody makes their own holiday for whichever day they can all be together, whether this it's Thanksgiving it, this, or another This is one. Thanksgiving right now. <laughs> it, it, feels, it feels forgotten, huh? Yeah. The turkeys. Well, at least they're living. The turkeys are living. Yeah, some of them. Uh, some no, they're of them. not. Yeah. No, they're okay. Not. <laughs> and going back on the railroad track, so oh, we're starting again. Um, tell us about the PTA and your role. Sure. Well, the PTA is the group of parents, but it's group of parents, teachers. Um, we hold meetings once a month, and it's just a an association that works to better our school. So it's just a great group of parents, um, and they get together. They um, help raise money. They purchase things for our school and things like that. So I am at, uh, the teacher representative for PTA, and I'm also the recording secretary for our meetings. So I record all of our minutes. Okay, and is there anything else you would like to add before you before we and you say goodbye? Well, sure. I will say one thing to third, fourth, and fifth graders. So don't forget that there is an opportunity for you all to audition for gifted and talented art, dance, drama, um, or music. So um, those papers will be going home, and um, and if you're interested in that, just get that back to me, and I'll give you all the information you need. So 
Um, also, there's one more thing I'd like to add. Yes. Um, so there's this riddle I've been wanting to ask some people. Okay. And, and I, want, I want to see if any of you guys can get it right. So, okay. so, so it is, though I am dark, I die by night and come again in morning light. What am I? Shadow. B. Wow. No, it's a shadow because in the dark, shadows don't exist because everything's dark. Mm -hmm. In the light, shadows do exist because you need light for a shadow. Yeah, yeah that dude's right. That dude's right. How'd you know? How'd you know? Most people ask that kid wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. It just makes sense if you don't overthink any. No, it's if right. You, that if was you just a very quick response. I just would go yeah. processing what yeah, 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 like, yeah, like yeah. Most, most people are like, Sun. Everyone <laughs> rewind so you don't hear Alpha's answer, please. Because he just shouted it out right. It's rewind time. Shut up. You did it. You did it. Okay. That's a good riddle, though. Makes people think. Hold on. And oh, do you want to say it? Okay. Oh, I was actually going to say a riddle of my own. Um, <gasps> okay. Um, well, we just wanted to say thank you so much, Mrs. Roscoe, to come and be here with Sharkaz. I am so honored that you all invited me. Thank you so much. to play sports. I am Amaya and I'm thankful to have my family. My name is Benedicta. I'm thankful for God and my family. My name is Karen and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Jocelyn and I'm thankful for my crazy cat. My name is Aniston, I'm thankful for gymnastics and my family. I'm Kirby Allen, I'm thankful for my family and my house. My name is Samaya, and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Chrysler, and I'm thankful that I'm here. My name is Kanaya, and I'm thankful for my family and being athletic. My name is Claire, and I'm thankful for this podcast. My name is Justinia, and I'm thankful for my family. I'm Aaliyah and I'm thankful for my for sports. My name is Giselle and I'm thankful for my family and I'm thankful for school. And my name is Abel Hedrick and I'm thankful for the food that my family gives me. Hi, my name is Bryce and I'm thankful for everything. Hi, my name is Azra. I'm thankful for everything that I have, and I love my family, and I'm thankful for them caring about me. Hi, my name is Jesse, and I'm thankful ever for everything I have. Hi, my name is Nancy, and I'm thankful for um, my family and my life. Hello, my name is Mia. I thank for my, for my family and for my Hi, my name is Aaron, and I'm thankful for family and friends. My name, my name is Nolan, and I'm thankful for everything that's good in the world. Hi, my name is Ava, and I'm thankful for my family and teacher. Hi, my name, my name is Ethan, and I'm thankful for my ma math skills. My name is Jonah, and I'm thankful for my family and my education. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm thankful for my family. Hi, I'm Marina, and I'm thankful for my family and my house. Hi, my name is Erin, and I'm thankful for my, for my friends and family. Hi, my name is Aditi, and I'm thankful for my friends and family. Hi, my name is Jack, and I'm thankful for my principal and teachers. Hi, my name is Mia, and I'm thankful. I'm and I'm thankful for that I have something to eat and that I have a house. Hi, my name is Ali, and I'm th grateful for my family and the stuff I have. Hello, my name is Akshita. I'm thankful for my friends and family. Hello, my name is Mina, and I'm thankful for my friends. Hello, my name is Eva, and I'm thankful for food. 
Hello, my name is Christian, and I'm thankful for video games. Hi, my name is Luca, and I'm thankful for family. Hi, my name is Alex, and I'm thankful for video games and family. Hi, my name is Beyonce, I'm thankful for soccer. Hi, I'm Pranish, and uh, I'm thankful for games and my family. Hi, my name is Shavam, and I'm thankful for technologies. Hi, my name is Ryan, and I'm thankful for Fortnite and my family. Hi, my name is Jackson, and I am thankful for food. Hi, my name is Harper, and I'm thankful for my friends and family. Hi, my name is Amelia, and I'm thankful for food. My name is Lily, and I'm thankful for fruit. Hi, my name is Savannah, I'm thankful for McDonald's and my mom. Jada and I'm thankful for my brother. My name is Savannah and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Chloe and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Nora and I'm thankful for God. My name is Cheyenne and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Gleason and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Michelle and I'm thankful for food. My name is Ludwig, and I'm thankful f- thankful for my teachers. I'm Ludwig, and I'm thankful for my family. I'm Anthony, and I'm thankful for my food. My name is Jackson, and I'm thankful for sports. My name is Warner, and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Victor, I'm thankful for my mom's food. My name is Esther, and I'm thankful for my teachers. My name is Carmen, and and I'm thankful for my home and my family. My name is Eric, and I'm thankful for my friends and my family. My name is Jaden, and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Clara, and I'm thankful and I'm thankful for my family. My name is Samuel, and I'm thankful for my family and friends. My name is Suzanne, and I'm thankful for my family and friends. My name is Andre, and I'm thankful for my family and friends. My name is Aiden, and I'm thankful for my family and friends. My name is Sophia, and I'm thankful for God. My name is Elon, and I'm thankful for God. My name is John, and I'm thankful for my friends and my family. Hi, my name is Cairns, and I'm thankful for God in the world. My name is Jasmine, and I'm thankful for my family and friends. Hi, my name is Jaden, and I'm thankful for my shelter. My name is Avery, and I'm thankful for my Nintendo. My name is Ellie, and I'm grateful for my family. My name is Kristen, and I'm thankful for my pet. My name is Raymari, and I am thankful for my teacher. My family. Hi, my name is Mia. I think for for uh, my doggy. Hello, my name is Elizabeth, and I'm thankful for my mom and dad and my sister. Hi, my name is Louise. For my mom. I'm thankful for my mom. Hi, my name is Mokyo. I'm baby four. I'm my baby four. Your teacher. Hi, my name is Grace. I'm thankful for the cupcakes. Hi, my name is Joseph, and I'm thankful for for present and my big house. Hi, my name is Jack Salyers, and today I'll be re- reading The Giving Tree. 
from Shel Silverstein. Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk. He would swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy, but time went by, and the boy grew older, and the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree, and the tree said, Come, boy, come climb my, up my trunk, come swing from my branches, and eat apples and play in my shade, and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, the boy said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I only have leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And and the three was and the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy and she said, "Come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy." I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children, and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. In the forest, the forest is my house. But you may have, you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches, carried them away to build a house, and the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered, come and play. I'm too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and and make me a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. After a long time, the bull came back. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left for you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just here, an old stump. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I'm very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit, sit down and rest. The, bo the boy did, and the tree was happy. The end.
Hello everybody, this is this is Parker, and I'm here with Ben, and today we are going to be doing sports talk, and we, where we will be talking about what's going on all around the world with sports, and making some predictions in the future. So let's start off. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? So who's going to the Super Bowl is going to be the Niners and the... The Niners and the Vikings, that's what I think. I'm going to be honest here. I really think the Buffalo Bills and the – are the Philadelphia Eagles and the Buffalo Bills in the same – are uh, they Are they both in the NFC? Yeah, they're both in the NFC. Okay, so I think um, the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals – I really think the Bengals are going to make it back, I swear. I'm not just saying that because I like the Bengals – I don't highly think that that's going to happen. So who do you th- who do you think will win for your prediction? The, the Vikings. Niners. You think the Niners are going to beat the Vikings, really? They have Christian McCaffrey now, so probably that, the Niners. That is true. Anyways, who do you think's going who what team do you think's going to win the World Cup? <sighs> to be honest, I don't really pay attention to that type of sport, so I don't really know who's really going there, to be honest. I hope, but my I, oh. cousin, he watches a lot of it, so. I hope USA wins. Oh, well then USA. Um, Who's your favorite baseball team? Uh, The Phillies. I like their mascot. I'm going to be honest here. I'm just a Cincinnati kid, so I like the Cincinnati Reds, because why not? But um, I have a question. If you could choose any other player besides Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, who is your favorite player? Joe Mixon. A hundred percent, man. I just like the Cincinnati Bengals so much. What about nobody on the Cincinnati Bengals? Who else? Justin Jefferson. I really think he. I think he's a really talented player, and he has a lot of capability. I, I don't think I still don't think he's 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 reached his max capability yet. I think if if he was on the Bengals, the Bengals would be an even better team. Switch him out for like T. Higgins or anybody, we would be really good. Who do you think Odell Beckham Jr. is gonna go to? I think he's I think he's gonna go back to the New York Giants. To be honest, my dad my dad that's what my dad said at least. I think he's going to Dallas, to be honest, or the Chiefs. You know why I keep switching teams? Because n- no offense if OBJ is listening to this, but <laughs> you don't get along with your teammates that well. And and it's happened multiple times, so it's clearly not the team's fault. It's his fault. I mean, you kind of have a point, but what would you say who is the best running back? It's either Nick Chubb or Derrick Henry. Saquon Barkley, I don't think he's quite with those two yet. But I think, like I said with Justin Jefferson, with a little bit more practice, he could be just as good. Well, Joe Mixon, here's the problem with him. Number one, he almost tripped himself by his own offensive lineman. Number two, last time he missed his cue, which was kind (laughs) of sad. I uh, he's he's goofy. That I'll say that. But against the Panthers, they called that the Joe Mixon game. He had like five touchdowns. That was that was probably the his best game in his whole career. So who do you think is better, Joe Mixon or Dalvin Cook? Ooh, uh, I don't know, man. That, why'd you ask me this? Uh, because you're a Cincinnati fan, so I thought you would choose a. Uh, Joe Mixon. I, if I'm being honest here, I think Joe Mixon's a little bit better. So, if Dalvin Cook were to come in here right now, you would say Joe Mixon's better. Yeah. If he tried to do something with me, I get Mixon to come in here, and then he uses shoulder pad and he go. Pop. Well, last time he did that against Von Miller, we all know how that ended up. Oh. Oh, oh. Can we not talk about that, please? Um, <laughs> who, do you, who do you think is the worst team in the NFL right now? Sorry for all the um, 
to be honest, for all the um, Rams fans out there, the Rams, I mean. I think the Texans are still the worst. And plus, I just don't like Texas that well. Everything's bigger in Texas. Huh? <laughs> yeah, here, here, here. Uh, who would you say would halfway make to the Super Bowl and lose? Oh. Oh, if I'm being honest, I'm going to have to go with, you know how, like, the Bengals had, like, a stunning season last yeah, year? Yeah, totally. I think if they come and they make it again, I don't think they're going to win. They've blown three Super Bowls now. In the past, they've lost to the San Francisco 49ers twice. Now, they they just lost to the Los Angeles Rams last year, which I'm still really mad about. I bet, I bet that makes you happy because you're a Los Angeles Rams fan. Not anymore. <laughs> number one, they don't have Odell Beckham. Number two, they do not have Andrew Shuttleworth. So I'm kind of a Vikings fan now, even though they have zero Super Bowl reads. You you guys have a really capable team this year. Do you only have one loss? Uh, I'm not sure. I think you only have one loss. And I think, like I said, your whole team's really capable. Justin Jefferson. What's number 14's name? Uh, I was about to say Stephon Diggs, but he doesn't play for them anymore. Uh, I can't think of his name. Yeah, but I think he's better than Justin Jefferson right now, if I'm being honest. I mean, let's if we're if we're gonna say something that's really true, Justin Jefferson does not have the best gritty. <laughs> Jamar Chase doesn't either. Winnie the Pooh does. <laughs> no, I have to say something. But um, if you ever seen the movie Elf, he has the best gritty. <laughs> he goes, wee wee. <laughs> he looks. He looks like Yoshi hopping. So if the Bengals and the Rams were to go against each other, even though they already did, who would win? The Bengals would absolutely humiliate the Rams this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna not argue with that. <laughs> Maybe, like, at the end of the first half, it would probably be, like, 28 to 3. And so, in the end of the second half, it would probably be, like, 50 to 20. So, I have Nominate. a question. Yeah. Um, do you think Odell faked his injury? Ooh, that that's a good question. I don't think he did. You know, here's why. I think he he might have like landed or turned in a weird way, and that happened to me once with my but with my feet. One time, my feet I was just walking. They started having like really bad cramps. It just hurt really bad. So I really don't think that he faked his injury. If I'm being honest, my dad thinks he's faked his injury because once he caught the ball, then he dropped. He didn't. I mean, you could see kind of little clutched his ankle before the ball was thrown away. That that is true. All right. Thank you, everyone that's listening, for listening to Sports Talk. Have a great day. Bye.